Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from CyberLab and today will be another video about Proxmox. This video will be the second part of Proxmox and when I will start to explain a little bit more about uh, Proxmox and what configuration, what you need to know in order to get ready to start to do your virtual machine or your container of course. I tried to do this video because when I was looking again in the previous video, I think that was not completely clear and it was not uh, everything explained in order to get you ready for the stage that I want to get uh, your virtual machine. Anyway, if you already have Proxmox and you understand everything for this Proxmox, forget this video and jump for the next one when I'm gonna post it soon and then when I can start to, to install our first virtual machine. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel, and let's see how we can do it. Uh, first thing, we already have installed the Proxmox and we already have some configurations done. In this case, these Proxmox have the IP address 192.168.1.86.8006. So I can go to the web browser and start to run it. First of all, I suggest you don't run in a virtual machine, but I only run it because it was easy for me. Next videos I will show in a physical machine because I tried to do a virtual machine inside a virtual machine, didn't work well, so it's better to have a physical computer to do it. So if I open my web browser, I already have my Proxmox installed and run it. So the name of this node that I have in the Proxmox, it's a server lab, where it's from my channel, of course, and that is inside this data center. If you saw this previous video, you can uh, jump a little bit ahead, but it's important to explain a little bit for the people that's running or uh, looking for this video for this first time. I will not go so details as the other video, but I will show a little bit what you need to do in order to get everything ready for you. So here it's my Proxmox and here it's my data center. What's different between data center and node? Here in a data center, it's the top level. So I can have a lot of nodes inside the data center. And if I come here in summaries or summary, I can see all my nodes or everything that is connected. In my case, I have only one node online and if I look for this node, I have four CPUs. I have uh, around nine gigabytes of run memory and 30 gigabytes of uh, storage. In this case, I don't have subscription. You don't need to have, but it's fine. And here it's the IP address of this node. If I have more than one node, here will appear uh, all the nodes on, as well the overview of all of my resource. So if I have one node with four CPUs, another one with four CPUs, another one with four CPUs. So they will add everything for a total of 12 vCPUs or 12 cores that I have available for my system. And here will be all my IP address. Don't worry, in this video, I'll not show how you can add next nodes. But uh, when we arrive in this stage, you will understand a little bit more about it. As well, here I can get some comments and I can see all the information as a top level. If I go for my storage, I have all my storage here. In this local will be the US that I have, the same hard drive, where I can have all my backups, ISO, my container templates and continue on. And here my disks, containers and my ZFS. In the previous video, I show how you can configure your ZFS and create it. I will explain a little bit more about it, but let's go for my node. First of all, I have my summaries where they show all the characteristics as specific for this node. So I have uh, four cores and I have uh, nine gigabytes of uh, run memory and, and much less storage only for my CPU space. If I come here, I can see what is going on. I believe in that at this stage, they need to run some applications. So go a little bit up and my memory run as well, go a little bit up in the same stage. So if I come here in my system, I will first update my system. What I didn't show in the previous video and it's really important to do it. If I come here in update and I put refresh and put OK, they will always appear that messenger. Why they appear this messenger? When I look for my IP address, this one is the IP address for a pay or subscribe option. They have a more enterprise options, but the way that we're gonna configure it, don't need to have it. So I can come here and close it. And here should appear all the 
information that I need to update. So I have a lot of uh, different applications that uh, I need to update. Most of them, it's security application and it's interesting for you to run it and leave it updated. So I can come here and put update and then they will say that I have around 52.2 kbytes of data that they will use for my space. So I put yes, of course, I want to run it, principally because it's security. So I'll wait to update my system. Wonderful, once that appear this information, system is updated, it means that everything has been installed, but uh, I am not convinced with it. So let's close this page and try to refresh to see if they really appear. All time will appear subscription, so we can put OK, and that they will look for all my updates. Once that I put close here, they should disappear all this information. It's complete? No, because I have more information that I can update. If I look here, I have all my repositories and all those is local, so it's not worth to remove it. But here is the enterprise Proxmox that all time complain. You can unenable it, yes, potentially yes, but uh, it's not required and other it's local repository, so it's a local list. If I look here, I have another list that is related from Debian principally for these security updates, that will be a Debian update. But I can add extra lists for updates, so I can come here and put add, put OK, and that's uh, they have different options to update or to create extra repository for my Proxmox. If I choose this enterprise option, they will have only enterprise options, but I can always put no subscription, where they will have all the application that it's already in production or at least it's working well. All the others I can choose, but uh, if you don't know what you're doing, I suggest you don't touch it because potentially can have a mess up in your system and you have some test that uh, is in test so you don't know if it's working well or have some bugs or have anything. And those it's worse because it's some test specific that uh, the program is not finalized or it's not stable enough for you run in production. Only if you really know what you're doing, you run the others programs or look for others repository, otherwise forget and don't use it. So I can come here and put no subscription and put add. Now they will appear this one, but they didn't look for any information yet. So I come here, updates and refresh this page, they appear that you don't have subscription again, so I put OK again, and that they will look all this information. When they appear update, I can close it, and that they will appear the rest of uh, updates required. Now the origin will be Proxmox, so I have 43 items and I have more two items for the Debian. So if I look here, I have a lot of different applications as OpenZFS, I have a Proxmox backup client and other things that I can run and install it. So now I can put update and that they will use a little bit more of your disk, but I will tell 361 megabytes of your disk, it's really worth for guarantee that your system is updated and is working well. So I put yes and enter. Once appear this information, your system is updated, it means that uh, we finished to install it. But look what information that they show. They say, since that install a kernel update, please consider to reboot this node to activate all this new kernel. So this means that all the security application, everything that has been installed, is not uh, valid or is not running well until we reboot the system. So let's do it first of all to guarantee that everything is running well. I can come here, close, leave, and I come here for reboot. And I put yes. What it means, if I come here in my virtual machine, there will be a dark page where they are shut down all my hard drives, shut down everything that I have, and that reboot is slowly. It's only to be sure that everything to work, so let's wait to reboot. So now my system has been reboot, I can minimize it and I already have my system here. I know that has been reboot because they will show all this information that they start all the VMs or in the containers, so my system is working. Now one thing that I forgot to tell in the last video, if I come here in the disk, I have all my disk or all the information. When we set up the ZFS in our system, I told that the hard drives need to be clean without any format, without anything. But you don't need to properly remove the hard drive, get flush it or clean it in an external computer and that put it here. Here you can do everything. So if I select this section or this hard drive B, 
I can come here and put wipe disk where they will remove all the format and all the data that I have. The same thing I could do with the C. Also in this page is quite interesting because I can come here and show the smart value. What it means? In the previous video I show how risk or how bad it's to have a refurbished hard drive and the risk that you are putting yourself. So in this way, if I have these values, I can look for all this information. And for the Proxmox, it's exactly here that you can check. You can check if I have bad blocks or you can check if your system is failing or gonna fail soon. So you can replace the hard drive before you lose the data. I can come here and close. Here I can have the LVM where they will have all my capacity. But this one, it's not real capacity because if you look, the red have 88% used, but no, it's not 88% used. If I come here for LVM thing, they show how much really I have. And I have a hard drive of 15.3 gigabytes and I'm using absolutely nothing. Or I think if I come here my ZFS, I can know how much information I have for my ZFS. In this case, I have 10 gigabytes of uh, full capacity and I'm using nothing, zero use as well they show 0% fragmented it means that all the data is incorrectly placed if i come here in details i can have an idea how it's mode or how it's the format of my zfs i have my local zfs and this local zfs it's configured as a mirror two hard drives and this one is the hard drive names as well they didn't show any error and no data has been scanned if i refresh it they will appear all the information then they will show how much read, how much write, and if you have any message that I need to worry about it. Other thing that's important for you know, before you create this FS, it's only create your FS if you have a big system. If you have one or two gigabytes of run memory, they will not work well. Because the same thing as a true NAS, this FS is required to have one gigabyte of run for each terabyte of space. It means that if you have 10 terabytes of raw capacity, you're gonna need to have at least 10 gigabytes of run memory. Otherwise, it will not work well. This one, because they need to do the kind of cache and all the processing for it. If you're using a low power system or it's not production, only for trial, I suggest you choose X4, only to guarantee that everything is in place and that you not go and you're not gonna overload your system. Have all this information in mind, now I'm gonna explain a little bit more about virtual machines and containers and what's the difference between both. Virtual machine, it's exactly what the name is, things. It's a, a virtual machine. And that's, you can configure it the OS and you can dedicate part of your system. We're not gonna configure anything at this stage, but uh, let's get my virtual box and understand what it's about. Here is the Proxmox that I'm running. And if I come in settings, I have all my settings exactly the same that I will have the virtual machine. I have my system, how much process that's dedicated, what display, storage, network, and run memory, and continue on. But one thing that I need to remember, if I dedicate my system four cores, I cannot change it. I cannot change when it's running. If I dedicate nine gigabytes of um, run memory for my system, it means that they will be using these nine gigabytes of uh, run in my system. Imagine that I have a lot of run memory. I have uh, 100 gigabytes of run memory and I want to dedicate only four gigabytes for my system. That's not a problem at all. But remember, your system will, will lock this information, this quantity of run memory. So either that I dedicate four gigabytes, your system will be 4 GB, either that your virtual machine is not using all the 4 GB. The same thing for your CPU. If you're using less for your CPU, they will be locking these 4 GB or 4 cores or how many cores that you dedicate. This one is not limited if you have a large capacity, but it's limited if you have a low capacity. This reason that in this way, sometimes it's better to make a container. Container will work exactly the same idea as a docking container. Let's get one example. If I open my portainer, here in my portainer, I have a lot of containers, but I will get the Plex container only to explain a little bit more. If I come here in status, I know how much of my capacity they are using. So if I locate it, I'm using around uh, 400 gigabytes of run, and that's, uh, I can limit the maximum that I want. So I can say, this uh, Plex will use maximum one gigabyte of run. 
So they will not use more than one gigabyte because they limited this value. The same thing for my CPU. I can limit how much of my CPU is using. If I need more, they will use more. I can define it more. But if they don't need, they will not restrict or not lock this amount of CPU. So it's the difference. You can lock it and work only for a virtual machine or you can not lock and use a container. But have some limitation, not all the system will work as a container and not all the system will work as a virtual machine. Some of the system need to work as a virtual machine and some of the system need to work as a container. Other thing that it's interesting, not at this stage and will not apply for you if you have only one node, but you have more than one node, in the case of container, you can recreate this container for one node to another really easy without needing to close this container. Basically, you drag it and that they will move and don't close the container and keep working the application as nothing happened. Will not happen the same way as a virtual machine. If you're running a virtual machine and you want to move from one node to another, they will close everything, shut down, and that will open again in the next node. So these kind of things that you need to consider. And you're gonna ask Alan, why you want to move a container or why you want to move a virtual machine? Basic for balance. You want to balance your system. Suppose that you're using 10% of one machine and 90% of the other machine, you can migrate for have 4040 or 1450, your choice, or 5050. So you can migrate and balance it. This reason that is interesting for be able to move between one node to another. So this video was the second step or more information about the Proxmox. I didn't show how you can create a virtual machine or a container, but in the next video, we'll show how you can create a virtual machine, container, add no more nodes and continue on to make your system more complete and work in a better way. So if you like this video and think that it was worth it, so don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for this channel and see you next time. Bye.